Good morning. Welcome to Centenary's Founders Day Convocation. I'd ask you at this point to uh, find a hymnal in front of you and turn to page 117 and let's uh, sing loudly and, and lustily, O oh God, our help in ages past. this institution and to honor those who came before us. We are indebted to all of those who had the foresight and the determination to envision and develop the Centenary College that we know today. For that, we are forever grateful. We lift them up and we remember them today. We gather also to honor those among us today who have dedicated themselves with years of service and with their gifts and talents that enable us to endure as an institution, and we are grateful for them as well. Gracious God, you have endowed this institution, these trustees, faculty, staff, and students with gifts beyond that which we can measure. In our gratitude, we ask that we may be faithful servants of these gifts so that Centenary may continue to educate and empower our students and future generations to lead and serve in this world. Holy God, we ask your blessings on our mayor today as he delivers our keynote address. Bless his administration and their service to our city and to our community. We ask all these things in your holy name. Amen.
Good morning. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Thank you to our trustees and special guests, to our faculty, staff, and students, our community members and supporters, for being with us today as we remember our past, honor our present, and look forward to the bright future of Centenary College. We will begin this morning by recognizing some special faculty and staff for their years of service. President Holloman will give each honoree their service pin. When you receive your pin, please pause for a photo op. That's very important um, and a celebration. All right. This morning, we honor a number of individuals. We'll start with our 10-year pins. The first uh, recipient is Miss Anne Marie Bruner Tracy. <laughs> Dr. Becky Murphy. Mr. Jeremy Johnson. And Dr. Corey Wicken. As he moves into the mayor, mayorship, mayor, mayorality. Um, it's, it's so inspiring to know that he doesn't just talk the talk, he walks the walk. He's done the hard work of helping stabilize neighborhoods, and now he'll be taking that skill to our whole city, and we are really excited to see where that takes him. I'm very honored that as one of his uh, earliest official acts, he's uh, been able to join us today. And so with that, I introduce the new mayor of Shreveport, Mr. Tom Arsenault. I know that you can't see this, but for those of us who are not as gifted as Dr. Holloman, there's a stand. <laughs> First, uh, Dr. Holloman, members of the Board of Trustees of Centenary College, faculty, staff, most importantly, students, I thank you for the opportunity to address you today. This morning we stand on the shoulders of the faculty, staff, students, trustees, friends of Centenary College who have made Centenary College of Louisiana the superlative institution that it is. The shoulders are tall and broad. Founded in 1825, Centenary is older than the city of Shreveport, which was founded 11 years after that. And we can look to the past to draw inspiration for our future. As Dr. Holloman mentioned, Centenary was founded in Jackson, Louisiana in 1825 as the College of Louisiana. And after an 1845 merger with Centenary College, a Mississippi Methodist institution, Centenary College of Louisiana, which we now know, was born. It moved to its Shreveport campus as a result of a gift from the Atkins family in 1908. Now, Strong's was not yet here. <laughs> probably, uh, neither was uh, King's Highway. There was probably some kind of a path uh, involved, but uh, nonetheless, Centenary College was here and has been here. The Shrevetown Corporation founded Shreveport in 1836 as a trading center made possible by the removal of the great log jam 
by U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Captain Henry Miller Shree. He was not a riverboat captain, he was a captain in the Army. Shreveport's location has served it well being on a north-south waterway that intersected the east-west Texas Trail. Now it sits at the intersection of I-20 and I-49, along with still the Red River providing navigable water transportation to and from the Gulf of Mexico. Shreveport's business and political leaders had profound foresight in the 1920s, and I want to mention two things that they did that have had a major impact on the city of Shreveport and all of Northwest Louisiana. There were two bond proposals passed in the 1920s, both of them having a tremendous impact. The first was the decision and the funding to build Cross Lake. Without Cross Lake, we have no water supply in the city of Shreveport as we stand here in 2023. The second thing that the citizens of Shreveport did was to decide to buy about 11,000 acres of land. That land happened to be across the river in Bossier Parish because that's where they could find 11,000 flat acres that could be given to the federal government for the building of an Air Force base. So that's what the reason that Barksdale Air Force Base is what it is has to do with the foresight of the people of Shreveport to buy the land and give it to the federal government. It's a little like the foresight, a lot like the foresight of the Atkins family to say we should build a college campus here on this site in Shreveport. But we, but you, should not be content with the past. You are the future. You are the future. And in your hands and in our hands are decisions now that will determine that future. Shreveport is a mature city, maybe even an old one, although not by old world standards, certainly by American frontier standards. But it is not a dead one. It can have a bright future. Centenary College for the Frontier, as Dr. Holderman mentioned, is an old institution, but it also can have a bright history. The enemy to revival, the enemy to restoration, the enemy to that great future is pride. And I'm going to be very unpolitical here and share a story with you about pride and what can happen when you decide to give it up. I served on the Shreveport City Council from 1982 to 1990, and I thought I did a really terrific job. Just ask me. <laughs> uh, I ran into some uh, personal difficulties about around that time and found myself living in an old area of Highland on East Jordan Street. I'll invite any of you to go take a ride down East Jordan. It isn't a whole lot different now than it was then. But I still thought I'd really done a great job, and, and that had been in my, my council district. I thought there was something, you know, that I had really done well for those people down there. So one day on a Saturday, I was sitting at home, and the door knocked. I opened the door and there were two men who said, Mr. Arsenault, somebody told us that you were living here and that you had fallen on some difficult times. I want you to know that we're here in case you need anything from us. They were sincere, they were loving, they were kind. And so I thanked him very much and I told him I would be in contact with him. I went back inside and I wept. 
I wept because I had been condescending. I wept because I had been proud. I wept because I had been arrogant. And I decided that the sin that I had that struck me that day, that confronted me that day, was the sin of pride. Because, you see, I had been worshiping myself instead of the Lord. So I take to heart the Lord's words to Solomon in 2 Chronicles. If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send a plague among my people, that's the first part of the one that most people are going to recognize from the rest of, this, of the quotation. And my people who are called by my name humble themselves, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You see, it's never too late to turn. It's never too late to seek the face of the Lord. It's never too late to humble yourself and to turn from your wicked ways. And a lot of our ways we wouldn't think of as wicked. I'm not talking about things that a lot of people would list in a list of sins. But if you take a look at the first commandment, it says, I am the Lord your God. You will have no false gods before, no other gods before me. And sometimes we are the gods that we have before it. So during my campaign and uh, in my inaugural address, I took great inspiration from the 37th chapter of Ezekiel. You may recall that the Lord takes Ezekiel to a valley and he shows him a valley and the valley is full of bones. And he asks the prophet, son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel is a wise prophet, so he responds, Oh Lord God, you know, like I don't know, but you know. The Lord then instructs Ezekiel to prophesy over the bones. And when he does, the bones come together and they have sinew and they have muscle and they have form, but they still have no breath. So next God instructs Ezekiel to prophesy breath to the bones. And as Ezekiel obeyed, prophesying breath to the bones, the breath came into them, and they came to life and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. On this Founders Day, it is up to you, it is up to me, faculty, staff, citizens, leaders, to breathe more life into Centenary and to breathe more life into Shreveport. And we can do both. My friends, we have paid a high price for division. Division by race, division by political party, division by neighborhood, division by income. If we are to have the spirit of renewal that a new year and a new Founders Day, and a new school year, and a new dedication offer. We must heal those divisions and recognize that Shreveport, that Centenary, thrives only when all its people thrive. The bones of Shreveport, the bones of Centenary, are infrastructure, physical as well as human. That structure undergirds who we are as a city and who we are as Centenary College. Because of the length of time and the period of time when both came to be mature cities, Centenary and Shreveport are forever linked. So I want to talk to you, since we're at Centenary College with such a wonderful history, I want to talk to you about a song that probably most of you know. The toe bones connected to the foot bone. The foot bones connected to the heel bone. The heel bones connected to the ankle bone. The ankle bones connected to the shin bone. I could go on and they could probably go on much better than I could. 
Now you rem may remember that song as the opening lines from the song Dim Bones. What you may not know is that civil rights activist James Weldon Johnson and his brother J. Rosamond Johnson wrote that song, which was first recorded by the famous Myers Jubilee Singers in 1928. You may also know the Johnson brothers better for the lyrics and music for Lift Every Voice and Sing. Not all of Shreveport's, not all of Centenary's bones are dry and disconnected, but some are. We can, if we choose, breathe life or more life into them. But breathing life into the bones to live and to prosper is demanding work. It's too important strictly to live, to leave to government. It's too important just to leave to Dr. Holloman and the faculty and the staff. It's too important to leave just to the students. Everyone has a job to do to breathe life into centenary's bones. What can I do? Look around you at this beautiful campus. Look around you at the things this campus offers you. Look at the people who have dedicated multiple years of their life to the campus. Look at these two wonderful teachers who were recognized today for their outstanding contributions. Look at the friendships that you've made in Centenary College for now and for those of you at faculty and staff over many years. Look at those things and be proud of them and share them with people. Let me tell you, Shreveport needs Centenary College. We need the kind of intellectual university, the kind of liberal arts university that is going to send people out in the community with critical thoughts with the ability to make decisions, with the ability to learn, with the ability to make contributions. Those are the things that are so critical to the future of Shreveport. Some of you faculty and all of you students are too young to remember a cartoon character named Pogo from a comic strip. In 19, and Pogo, by the way, is a possum. And Pogo had a very famous, I can hear those peas coming right through the microphone. Where is Professor Harrison when you need him? Pogo observes in a famous uh, column, uh, uh, strip from 1970, we have met the enemy and he is us. <laughs> Let us not make Pogo make the same observation about us. If we don't love Centenary in our city, we cannot expect others to love her or to want to live here, work here, study, or play here. Breathing life into the bones of Centenary College and Shreveport requires us to care about each other. And I'll share one of my passages, favorite passages of poetry from John Donne. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manor or thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. And therefore, never sin to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Just like dim bones in the song, we must commit each part of the city and the centenary community to each other part. We are not islands, we form the part of a whole body. But we can have a joyful and hopeful future as one version of Dim Bones Chorus proclaims, Dim Bones, Dim Bones gonna rise again. Dim Bones, Dim Bones gonna rise again. Dim Bones, Dim Bones gonna rise again. Now hear the word of the Lord. When we all work together, Dim Bones of Shreveport gonna rise again. When we all work together, dim bones of Centenary College of Louisiana are going to rise again. 
So please join us in the renewal of the city of Shreveport and this great college. Yes, dim bones can live. Let's do this together.
from this place, strengthened by the foundation and the tradition of those who go before us, and breathe life into those bones. Be bold, be brave, be compassionate and kind. God be with you.